SpaceX continues to lead the charge in pioneering space exploration. While recent public discussions have centered around SpaceX's second launch attempt and its interactions with the FAA for the required launch permissions, it's essential to recognize the broader canvas of activities unfolding in the background. Beyond the immediate spotlight, SpaceX continues its ambitious journey with multiple projects. Not only are they advancing with the development of Booster 10, but work on Booster 9 and Ship 25 is also progressing at an impressive pace. We all know that SpaceX has selected Ship 25 and Booster 9 for the second launch attempt of the Starship. Only a couple of weeks ago, they completed the full stacking, raising expectations for an imminent launch. However, following the FAA's mandate for 63 additional modifications, SpaceX decided to de-stack the rocket. This is likely in order to accommodate the necessary changes and incorporate any required components. Officials are optimistic that the FAA will complete the necessary safety reviews and update SpaceX's Starship launch license by the end of October. Since SpaceX is already prepared for the launch, they won't waste any time once they get the approval. If everything goes as planned in October and they achieve the second takeoff, regardless of the outcome, they still have a solid two months to gear up for another launch before 2023 comes to a close. For those closely watching SpaceX's trajectory, this swift rebound isn't surprising. After the setback of the first launch attempt, many believed it would be a full year before they'd be ready for another shot. Yet, just four months later, SpaceX is gearing up once again. They haven't merely rectified existing systems, but have also integrated completely new systems like the Water Deluge system. To put this in perspective, if it weren't for SpaceX, introducing something as intricate as the Water Deluge system would have taken other companies more than a year to implement. This rapid response is a sign of their tenacity, which is why we're now hearing about the third launch preparations. For this mission, SpaceX has set their sights on Booster 10 and Ship 26. Booster 10 has already undergone two consecutive cryogenic proof tests. These tests involve loading the super heavy booster with cryogenic fluid, typically liquid nitrogen. Without any significant unplanned holds, SpaceX impressively loaded Booster 10's liquid methane and oxygen tanks with approximately 3,400 metric tons of this fluid. The sheer volume of 3,400 metric tons of cryogenic fluids when converted into their gaseous states during combustion create the thrust necessary to propel the Starship and itself to the desired altitudes. For context, Earlier versions of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket used less than 1,500 metric tons of propellant for their launches. The Super Heavy is designed to be much larger and more powerful than the Falcon Heavy, capable of carrying both Starship and its payload to orbit. Given these comparisons and SpaceX's intended design parameters, it's evident that the loaded 3,400 metric tons of cryogenic fluid in Booster 10 should be more than adequate for an orbital flight. These cryogenic tests serve a critical purpose. They simulate the extreme conditions the rocket will experience during liftoff and flight. It's essential to understand that materials don't always behave the same way in space as they do on Earth. The unique vacuum and extreme temperature variations can cause materials to contract, expand, or even become brittle. During these tests, the rocket's propellant systems, tanks, valves, and pumps are pushed to their limits ensuring they function as designed and can withstand the unpredictable nature of space conditions. These propellant load tests are key indicators that the rocket systems are ready for subsequent testing phases. This includes the much-anticipated static fire tests, where engine ignitions occur while the booster remains grounded. Observers also noticed removals and adjustments, like the removal of small chines and carbon dioxide tanks, hinting at upgrades and modifications for future testing and applications. In the same breath, Ship 26 was transported to suborbital Pad B, likely for static fire testing. The combination of Ship 26 and Booster 10 provides a glimpse into what could be the stacked configuration for the third launch attempt. However, it's vital to remember that Starship's development is still in its early stages. The prototypes we see now are just a few in a potential series of many that SpaceX may produce. A number of these might end up meeting the same fate as Booster 7 and Ship 24, exploding during tests. But these setbacks shouldn't be viewed solely as failures. Instead, they provide invaluable data and insights. Since that notable April 20th liftoff, 
which culminated in a controlled destruction of the vehicle high over the Gulf of Mexico, the company has implemented more than 1,000 changes to Starship's design. Among the most notable upgrades SpaceX has implemented is the hot staging on the booster's top. This advanced technique involves igniting the engines of the upper stage, while still attached to the lower stage before they separate. It's a delicate operation that ensures a smooth transition of thrust, minimizing the time the vehicle is without propulsion during stage separation. History has shown us that groundbreaking achievements often come after a series of missteps. Take, for example, the Wright brothers' early attempts at flight. Before their success at Kitty Hawk, they faced numerous challenges and crashes. Similarly, each test and prototype SpaceX develops, whether successful or not, offers invaluable insights that move them one step closer to their ultimate goal of making space travel more routine and affordable. In light of this, one might argue that strict regulations and expectations set by government bodies, such as the FAA, may be counterproductive. Expecting perfection at every step can stifle innovation. The path to truly groundbreaking achievements is rarely linear, and allowing room for failure can lead to better, more informed successes in the long run. Furthermore, in the broader context of global competition, if we continuously place hurdles in the path of companies representing the U.S., like SpaceX, other nations with more lenient regulatory environments might take the lead. This isn't just a matter of national pride. It's about strategic positioning in the new frontier of space. With China rapidly advancing its space capabilities and showing a more accommodating regulatory landscape, there's a real risk they could surpass the U.S. in this new space race if we don't adjust our approach. However, in recent years, even in the U.S., the aerospace industry has seen new entrants are also making significant strides and achieving groundbreaking feats. Stokespace, a startup based in Seattle, has made history of its own. Their recent achievement? A successful up-and-down test of the Hopper developmental rocket vehicle. This hydrogen-fueled engine powered a test flight, rising 30 feet and landing a mere 15 feet from its original location. Stokes breakthroughs are notable. They've pioneered differential throttling for attitude control and have tested a regeneratively cooled heat shield. The speed of their progress is impressive, with significant milestones reached in a short time. Stokes' vision parallels SpaceX's in many ways, with aspirations of creating fully reusable launch systems. The comparison between Stokes' systems and SpaceX's Starship is inevitable, as the milestone of Starship's successful first orbital launch looms ever closer. It underscores the rapid transition of Musk's vision. What was once deemed a far-off dream of Martian colonization is now edging towards becoming a concrete reality. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.